Hey, it's Carrie Brang from the McDill Air Force Base Library. Today I'm going to read for you Dangerously Ever After by Dash Kuslater, illustrated by Valeria de Campo. Dangerously Ever After, published by Dial Books for Young Readers and Imprint of Penguin Group. 2012. Princess Amanita loved things that were dangerous. She loved her pet scorpions and her breakless bicycle and her collection of daggers and broken glass. She loved leaning out of the topmost torrent in the castle and walking blindfolded at the edge of the moat. But most of all, she loved her garden, which was said to be the most dangerous in the world. Princess Amanita's garden was filled with prickles and stickles and brambles and nettles. There were plants that stung and plants that stunk and plants with spikes so sharp that the palace gardeners wore armor when they weeded them. One day, as the princess was watering a patch of itching thistles, a prince from a neighboring kingdom rode up. His name was Florian, and he was out looking for a dragon to slay, or a knight to challenge, or at least someone whose own age to talk to. Hello, he said. Nice flowers. They're not nice at all, said Amanita. Their itch is worse than a thousand mosquito bites. Then she noticed the prince's sword, which looked very sharp and dangerous. Nice sword, she remarked. Prince Florian took the sword from his belt and waved it in the air. See that bunch of grapes? Those aren't grapes, Amanita started to say there, but it was too late. Florian had already sliced them from the vine. Unfortunately, they were grainips, which exploded three seconds after being picked. They landed in the princess's brand new ruby studded wheelbarrow and blew a large hole in the bottom. Oops, Prince Florian said. Princess Amanita just stared at him with her hands on her hips until he got back on his bicycle and rode away. The next day, Prince Florian arrived at the palace with a large bunch of pink roses. I'm really sorry about the wheelbarrow, he said. But since you like flowers, I thought you might like these. The princess looked at the flowers curiously. What are they? She asked. They're roses. My kingdom is famous for them. But what do they do? Prince Florian was puzzled. Do? Are their leaves as sharp as razors? Amanita prompted. Do they stink worse than a giant's armpit? Do they climb up the roof and pull off the shingles? They uh, smell nice, Prince Florian answered at last, and they're pretty. Oh, said the princess and rolled her eyes. She was about to toss the roses in the trash when something sharp pierced her palm. She took a closer look. Lining each stem were thorns as long as sharp as shark's teeth. What did you say these were called? She asked the prince. Roses. They're wonderful, Amanita said, and immediately plunged them in a vase, stem side up, naturally. Feeling a little friendlier, Princess Amanita invited the prince for a walk through her garden. She showed him the heckleberries, which shouted insults at him as he passed, the swinging mace vine, which nearly took off his head, and the stink lilies, which smelled like a mixture of dog food, cabbage, and Limburger cheese. I would love to grow some of those dangerous flowers you brought, said Princess at last. Do you think you could send me some seeds? 
Prince Florian hesitated. He was very familiar with the royal stables and the royal library and the shelf in the royal kitchen where the cookies were kept, but he had never spent much time in the royal garden before gathering roses for the princess that morning. Princess Amanita made an exasperated face. Just give this note to the gardener, she said. Using a pen she made out of six inch cactus spine, she scribbled a message on a piece of royal stationery. It said, please send Princess Amanita some rose seeds, Amanita. The princess was overjoyed when the package of nine seeds arrived. She planted them outside her bedroom window and watched eagerly as they sprouted and grew. But instead of thorny pink roses, each one blossomed into a large pink nose. Almost immediately, the nine noses began to sniff. Then they began to twitch, and finally they began to sneeze. Bless you, said Prince Amanita. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. But, ah, uh, never mind. The noses, it seemed, were allergic to every other plant in the garden. They sneezed all morning and all afternoon. By evening, the sneezes had blown the needles off the cactuses and covered the garden in a sticky goo. That night, the noses began to snore. It sounded like a troop of monkeys playing tubas. No one in the palace got a wink of sleep. When morning came, Princess Amanita marched outside and pulled up each of the noses by the roots. Then she climbed on her brakeless bicycle. I'm going to find Prince Florian, and when I do, I'm going to stick those noses in his ears, she announced as she rode off. The princess sped pell-mell down one gigantic hill after another, turning left or right as the mood struck her. until she found herself riding through a dark, gloomy forest. Suddenly, she realized she didn't have the faintest idea where Prince Florian lived. Come to think of it, she didn't have any idea how to get back home either. In fact, she was lost. She stopped pedaling. A howl echoed through the trees that might have been the wind, but might have been a large, hungry princess eating wolf. This place seems kind of dangerous, Princess Amanita said to the noses. Of course, I love dangerous things. She looked around. I love sharp-toothed goblins and carnivorous spiders and the witch that probably lives in that cottage and being lost in the forest all by myself. By the time she got to the end of the sentence, Amanita knew that she wasn't exactly telling the truth. She did love dangerous things, but she just loved them a lot more when she was safe at home in her palace. It's all your fault, Amanita told the noses. How am I going to find Prince Florian? All I know about him is that he has a garden filled with roses. The noses sniffed sympathetically as if they were on the verge of tears. Then they sniffed some more. I wish you would stop that horrible snuffling, scolded the princess. You sound like a herd of warthogs. But when she looked at the noses, she saw that all nine were pointing in the same direction and sniffing so hard it seemed that they might fall off their stems. I wonder what you smell, Princess Amanita said thoughtfully. Maybe it's dinner. Hoping that it was, as it had been a very long time since lunch, the princess began pedaling in the direction the noses were pointing. The noses sniffed and snorted, and after a while, the princess began sniffing, too. It smelled like candy and lemons and cloves. She smelled something wonderful. It smelled like sleeping in the sun and staying up late for a party. It smelled like secrets and summer and beautiful dresses and the kind of folding knife that came with scissors and a screwdriver. It was the smell of thousands of roses.
and there on the horizon was Prince Florian's castle. When Princess Amanita saw Prince Florian, she didn't feel like sticking the noses in his ear anymore. She, so she gave him, so she gave them to him as a bouquet. What do they do, he asked. They smell good, the princess said. I mean, they smell well. Anyway, they're good at smelling. After dinner, the prince took Princess Amanita to see the royal rose garden. The noses came too, sniffing happily. They didn't sneeze once. Maybe we could plant them here, suggested Princess Amanita. So they did. The roses didn't mind the noses, and the noses loved the roses. Both, in fact, lived happily ever after. As for Princess Amanita, she went home with nine of the thorniest rose bushes in the royal garden. They were just as dangerous as she had hoped, and they smelled nice, too. The end.